Hello ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all for joining me tonight. Painting with Harold. I am Harold. And I've got a 16 by 20 canvas tonight that's turned on portrait and I've already covered it with a thin even coat of liquid white. And tonight our colors are going to be titanium white, sap green, lizard crimson, dark sienna, Van Dyke Brown, Cad Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, and the Bright Red. And yes, you heard that correctly. I didn't mention any mountain colors. I didn't mention any blues. <laughs> uh, not really sure how this paint's going to turn out. Hopefully it, it turns out the way my mind is seeing it. If it does, it'll be a beautiful painting. And... It should be a lot of fun to paint. And with that said, I think we'll jump right in. We'll pick us up a two inch brush. And with that two inch brush, I'm gonna go right into the CAD yellow. And I'm just gonna tap a little on the bristles. Get an even distribution of paint. That don't have to be a lot of CAD yellow, just, you know, we just want some color on the brush. And we're gonna come up here and I think this is one of them paintings that's not really going to matter if we start in the middle this time. We just want to come up here and just put us a little yellow spot in the sky, just about like it. That's about all we need. Just a kind of a little round circle type shape. Then we want to go right into Indian yellow next. Tap a little of that on the brush. And we'll come right outside of this circle we just made. And if you give yourself some room outside of this, you know, just a little, it'll uh, make it easier when you go to blend. But that Indian yellow is, uh, it's just a little bit, you can see the orange in it some, and it's, it's just a little darker than the cad yellow. Then we'll go right into some yellow ochre, and we'll just, Bring it down on the side over here, just like so, on both sides. We'll do that, about like that is all we need. Then we're going to go right into the Dark Santa with the same brush. We have not washed this brush yet. And then we'll bring the Dark Santa in as our final color and I hope you can already see what's happening here we're, uh, we're just letting it get a little darker as it moves away from our light source which is in the middle right now but we're gonna we're gonna work on that light source and make it even more more bright here in a second I'm gonna bring this around like so that's about all we're looking for right now and if, uh, when we get started here, if this, uh, if this dark sienna goes to trying to take over our color, we'll back out of it. I'll show you what I mean. You know how you don't want to carry a dark color back to the middle? What well, is that kind of painting? All right, we're going to pick up another clean Two inch brush. Now if you don't have a bunch of brushes, now would be the time to wash the one you were using. But just to save a little time, I'm gonna use a I'm gonna use several brushes. But I will wash them at some point, I'm sure. Alright, now we're gonna come right back in the center here with our white, right into the cad yellow. And we're gonna start working our way around. Start working around in a circle and just start blending your colors together. And then when you get out here to this brown, like I said, don't uh don't bring it back to the center. Because it's uh it's darker and it will eat up your other colors. It'll eat them up quick. You won't even realize it's up there. But now, I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and wash both these brushes. 
you can make that center part as light as you want it. You can go back into that as many times as you want. And that's entirely up to you. Uh, just as long as you remember not to go back to the center once you get out to that brown. some of this thinner off with a paper towel just to make sure it is good and dry because it's got to be good and dry for this step. All right, we're going to go back in again. But this time I'm only going to tap just a little on the, on the tip of my brush. Then I'm going to come up and start right in the middle again and just start blending out from there and try to keep a good, a good bright spot right in the middle. Because that's gonna that's gonna play out as our sun if everything works out all right in this painting. All right, then we wanna we we'll just blend these colors. We want these colors looking real soft and, and blended together, so you can't tell where one color starts and another one stops. I'm going to knock out as much of this paint as I can on the paper towel. Then we'll come up here and very lightly, very lightly blend these colors across just like so. Very lightly. About like that. And what you should have is a pretty decent looking little sky. We got some right there. This side here needs to it needs to kind of calm down a little bit. Mm, that don't look too bad. If you have to move away, you know, move back from your canvas a little bit to see your colors, that's a uh, Perfectly understandable because sometimes you just have to do that. A painting really is not designed to be viewed right off the tip of the nose anyway. It's it's supposed to be viewed from a you know a little ways back, and it's supposed to grab people's attention and make them want to come up here and see what's on the canvas. You know, pull them from across the room like a magnet. <laughs> Uh, if you can do that, then you got yourself a nice little painting. All right, now we're going to take this brush that God gave us. This one right here with a little white on it. And we'll come right up here in our white spot and we'll make us a little round circle, about like so. And that'll give us an indication of a, of a sun. Then you can pick up a clean white brush and just just brush it right in. You won't even get no paint on the brush right here. You just want to set it in the sky. You don't even get enough paint on there to even worry about. <coughs> Alright, excuse me. Now, we are going to pick up a fan brush. Probably a uh, number six here. Yeah, one that I've been one I've been using for quite a while. All right, I'm gonna go right into a little of the dark sienna, just a little. I don't, I don't need much here. And I'll just, I'll come up here and just put in the indication of a little cloud, just making little circles. There's not gonna be a lot of clouds in this painting. I'm gonna bring it over here and just kind of. Kind of let it fade out as it goes on back. Just continue making little circles. Just let it, just bring it on back till it completely disappears back here. 
we'll get just a little more and we'll come over here on this side and we'll start and we'll start about right here with this one making little circles just little circles and if we have to bring it all the way off we will no big deal I like it, that's all we need and we'll pick us up just a little bit more and we'll give this one right here a little bit a little bit of a point in right here, about like that. Well, now it's got this night needing to go all the way off too, don't it? <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's better. I got it here. That is better. All right, we'll pick us up just a little bit more. We'll come in here with a couple little, couple little stringers. Just a couple little floaters that are just up here in the sky floating around, and these won't these won't be a real defined cloud here. These are going to be just hanging around, just real light, about like so. All right, then we're going to knock the brown off that brush best we can. And we will take a little cat yellow and a little bit of white, mix them together on a brush. And we'll come right up here at the top and we'll just start putting this yellow color up here. Now, one thing you can do with this color is uh, you can use them. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you on this next one over here. Because this really works. It works really, really good. As a matter of fact, we'll go back and fix that one as well, too. But you can pick you up a little bit of the yellow. And a little bit of the white, just like we did. And mix it. But this time, you're doing it on a filbert brush. And that way, when you come up here and tap... With that filbert brush it kind of gives you that that roundness on the on the tip and what you want to do is you want to keep that you want to keep that color on the top of your cloud so you're actually touching the brown part of it where usually you touch outside of it this time you're actually touching right at the edge of it, right where the brown meets. Because you uh, you want this color to be hit by that sunlight. And when that sunlight hits it, it just, just lights it up. I like so. Because when we come back blend this out, it'll, we'll go up there and touch just a little of it and pull it down into that dark center. I mean, just a very little of it. That's why we want to have some out here on the, some out here on the edge that we can kind of grab. Now, not a lot of it. I'm not. I'm not saying we're gonna have a lot of it like that, but you know, there will be a little. This, these clouds here might, they might pick up just a tad, but it won't be much. It won't be much at all way down there. We just need to we need the brightness in, in certain places to where that sun is just just burning them into. Just shining so pretty today. I like it. Should do it. All right, now we're in a since we're in a little tight spot here, we'll we'll come up here with our one inch brush, and we'll just start right under that where we just did that at, 
and we'll just pull some of it right into the clouds. Just be real careful not to destroy nothing here. You're not out to destroy, you just want to blend real light. Just pull that color down into there and just let it blend into that dark sienna. And you can see how it's just fading away in spots and getting that misty kind of far off look. And the reason it's doing that is because it's got white in it. And that white's just white's just washing that color down. That's all it's doing. So it's not hurting your painting at all. If anything right now it's it's helping. Just like so. Just making those little circles. Just always keep that brush moving. That's the that's the name of the game right here. Keep that brush moving. Then you can come up, just like always, fluff it up, both sides with that little that little backward C. And then very gently, very gently, come across them real light real light. And then right here just come in here where you put this color and just pull these clouds and just make them appear as soft as you can across here. Just like so. Now that should be about all we need to do as far as as far as the sky goes, but oh, this little spot here is kind of messing with my mind a little bit. I'm going to fix that right now. That actually turned out to look like a cloud, but it's not bad, so we're okay. <coughs> All right, now we're going to mix this up a color. Let me get my palette out here for this so I can show you what we're doing. All right, if you can see this. I want to come up here. I'm going to grab us some white. I'm going to bring that white up here. We'll get just a little more, maybe about that much. Then I want to come over here and get us some of our dark sienna. I want to bring it in. Let's clean off this knife. Because then we want to come in here and grab us some of our yellow. And we want to bring it up here. That way we can use it when we need it. And we're going to go right into that, that white and that brown that we just made up. And we're going to mix it on the palette. And this can be a real good, uh, a real good blend. This don't have to be no marble mix. It can, you can blend these colors good. It got a little of the yellow in it that was on the that was still on the knife. So it ain't no big deal. Alright, let me clean my knife off here. And I'll show you what we're gonna do. Before we jump into that. Alright, before we jump right into this, we're going to take a clean dry two inch brush and we're going to take this brush and we're going to we're going to brush mix all three of our yellows we're going to, we're going to go right into the cad yellow and the yellow ochre and the indian yellow we want all three of these colors brush mixed right on the brush and then we're going to come up here and we're just going to start gently across, just pulling all these colors across, just like so, just like this. And then the closer you get to the horizon, the lighter that color is going to get. And that's what we're looking for, just like so. 
and just keep blending until it just blends right together. Just like that. You should have something that looks about like that. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Lord, Harold has lost his mind tonight. What is he doing? <laughs> well, I hadn't quite cracked yet. I'm, I'm trying something here. My mind seen it. And my mind said, wow, that's pretty. But my hands, you know, my hands ain't, ain't ain't agreed with that yet. They they kind of like, what is your mind telling you to do again? Are you sure about that? But we're gonna work it out. We're gonna work it out the best we can, and we're gonna try not to cry much about it. Cause crying ain't gonna do us no good now. Clean on the two inch brush. I forgot to mention that. And then I'll knock a little of the thinner off just to make sure it's good and dry. I have got me a cold beverage tonight, by the way, and it is a Pepsi. I may have should have got a cup of coffee because this painting is going to. It's going to worry me to death until we get it done. Okay, that color that we just made up with the uh, Van Dyke brown and the white, it's, uh, let me show you what that color looks like, by the way. I want you to see it. That's it right there, the kind of creamy color. And I think adding that little white to it, I mean, that little yellow to it actually helps them. So if yours is, you know, a little dark and you want to add some of that cad yellow to it, I think you can. I think you can get away with it. I mean, I don't think it'll hurt anything. <coughs> Excuse me. But I got my, my little one-inch oval brush now. And I'm going to show you what I was going to do with this color now. I'm just going to tap my brush straight into it. And get it kind of good and loaded. Then I'm going to come right up here and I'm going to go to tapping. Now, this, this color is about exactly how I want it. I just barely want it seen. Just barely want it seen back here. I want it to look like some trees way off in the distance. But I want to bring them down Kinda at an angle across here. See how I'm doing that? Until I get about where the sun is and I want to stop. Then you can go back and kind of give it a little body right through here. And if you need to pick up a little more, that's fine. You know, to finish it out on the corners or out toward the edge. But just tap this across here until you get about to the to where the sun is, just stop a little short of it. And then get you a little more paint. Leave your little gap in here and then come back on this side and do the same thing. Just now over here, if, if we're gonna turn these into trees, I got a five. I'd call that five. You don't have to do the same amount on this side. I mean that's that's not what I'm trying to point out here. I mean, you just, you bring this up and, I mean, if it works out to where it's five, that's fine. But you don't have to worry about a certain amount is, is what I'm trying to say. I mean, you do what, you do what you do. If you end up with five, that's fine. If you end up with more than five, that's fine too. All right. We got us up. Just make sure you put a little body under there because we're gonna we're fixing to do something here. Okay. We're going to pick up 
a two inch brush and we're going to put just a little white on our bristles just a little tap it on about like so I mean it's not a lot of white at all and we're going to come right up here and just tap that white on first that way you get most of it off your brush and then just start tapping at the bottom of these trees just start tapping and create a mist through here just want to create a mist at the bottom of these trees now I'm tapping pretty hard here as you can see but we just want to we want to create a mist and the reason we put all these other colors on these yellows and stuff is because they're all up in the sky <coughs> and it'll kind of keep that color basically throughout the whole painting as long as we uh you know as long as we don't go and make a big change and add a just add a real crazy color in here which I don't think we're going to and then just kind of blend it out and see how it created that little mist right there you can come back and you can kind of give out a little twirl if you want to to kind of like the clouds you know how you kind of blend it and you just remove the brush strokes you just want it to be a little a little soft area of mist in here is all we're looking for just that's, that's all we want all right now one thing you can do right here I mean I'm gonna save this brush one thing we can do and I think we will just for the for this painting I think it'll be pretty is in the same color just grab your fan brush load it up and come in here and just just tap down you a couple little evergreen looking trees in the distance back here just you know just here and there you don't have to do many just you know in between you in between your tall trees is fine or you the other trees and they just come along and tap out the bottom about like so and it, it'll it'll just look like all kinds of trees mixed up in there by by, by bringing a by bringing one of these evergreens here and there it'll, it'll make it look more like natural woods back in here you know because you got different types of trees but you don't have to do many just you know just here and there about like so that's about all you need we'll hang on to that brush for now in case we decide to do that again in a few minutes all right now we'll pick up our oval again and this time we're going to take and tap just a little bit of the dark sienna on and go right back up into our color and that way it'll be just a just a tad darker we want to work out that same color but we want it to be just a little bit darker that way when we come back up under here we can leave our mist but our color is darker now and it's going to push those trees back and come down in your same angle again just like we did and get it get it thick across the bottom Come down through here and this time come over a little further than what we did the first time just a little bit not much see that see where I stopped at and then you bring this down at an angle 
and give it a little body under there. Then come up and get you a little more dark sienna and tap right into the same colors again. Now this time, leave your gap over on this side. So you'll be starting, you'll be starting right here on this one. See how we did that? And then work your way up. Just keep your color. Because it's gotta be, it's gotta be darker. And come up in the bottom of that one. About like so. That's all you got to do. That's all we're doing. Just like that. Then we're going to pick up our two inch brush again. We're going to come right in the bottom of this one. And we're going to tap this cover out. Just like we did before. Just follow that angle. It out at an angle crosser. All right. Then knock as much paint out of it as you can on your paper towel. Come right back up and just blend the bottom out again, just real lightly. Oh, I want to show y'all something I got. I found this the other day. It's a little, uh, what's it called? An oval mop. I found this at Hobby Lobby. And I've been wanting to try it. It's supposed to be a little blender. I know it's got real soft bristles on it. I know that. Oh, wow. Well, that is pretty neat. It wasn't. It wasn't very expensive. It was uh, Master's Choice or whatever they call this, Master's Touch. Sometimes this stuff's on sale for like fifty percent off, forty percent off, and I caught it on sale. I don't remember what I paid for it, but it was it was rather cheap. Before the before the uh, discount, so I went ahead and. I picked one up just to, just to have. Wow, it's pretty neat. That was a pretty good job. I know all new brushes put out hairs. And I just had three or four right there fall out. They came right off. That's good. Okay, that'll work. All right, and we got that little, that little area done. I wonder if you can use it to oh yeah look at there oh wow look at that how it softens that bottom right up I like that I hope y'all can see that on the camera how, how good it did that wow that is awesome hmm we may have something here ladies and gentlemen <laughs> It's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard to beat my Bob Ross brushes, though. Because I'm telling you now, that Bob Ross, uh, the one I call the rabbit brush, oh, my goodness, that thing is so soft. And it just, it just blends unbelievable. And you can paint with it. That's the thing. I mean, you can, you can put paint on it and paint with it, and it's just so soft. All right, anyway, <laughs> I'm getting carried away here, not paying attention to what I'm doing. All right, I think from here, what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, just to bring you up to speed on what's happening here, I am going to pick up, where is it at? I've got one, I know I do. I know I do. I hope I do. Yeah, there it is. No, it ain't. Well, I can use this one. 
I thought I had a flat one. But this is just a little round brush, just a little cheap round brush. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to go right into the white. Now, a mistake a lot of people make when they're using little brushes is they put too much paint on the brush. These little brushes are used are designed to paint off the tilt. So make sure the paint is on the tip of your brush. And you'll find that it's so much more controllable that way. But we're going to come right out of here. And let's see. Do I want to come that way or this way? Mm, that's a quick question. I think I'll come out of here at first. So right here, I'm gonna I'm gonna come across here with a just a straight line, and then shoo, and then shoo, straight down with this with this color here, just like so. Just like so. And then I want it to I want it to kind of fade away back here a little. I don't want it. I don't want it real noticeable back in here very much. Now I can go back in there and fix it. And I'll show you how here in a second. Alright. And then I want to come out on this side. I'm gonna come out on this side over here and then just like and let it fall straight down. And then pull it back. Like so. And just pull it back from here. And then I'll cut this one off right in here just to make it fade out because I don't want these I don't want these touching just like, just like so so I'll come up here and turn this into mist up here just to make it fade away just like that And then I'll get this one a little more prominent across here where it's a little more seen, just like so. And have this one just kind of fade on out. I will go over here and pick up a little of my color, my dark sienna and and I'll just tap on some little little tree looking shapes back in here just to kind of hide some of this just kind of blend them out just to hide where that water's coming out at because I just want this scene back here I don't want it I don't really want it uh be the star to show or nothing right now just like so just put a lot of mist in here to make it where you can see it coming where you can see it coming out and it just looks like it's just stopped and fell right here just like so matter of fact we can grab a little more white just to give it a little more a little more mist back in here about like so just to make it look like it. That area back here has just got a lot going on. Not like it. And then you can pick up just a little bit of the yellow and come in here and kind of kind of hide that color a little. Make it look like the sun's kind of still hitting it. Hitting that mist. And just kind of work the mist in all the way around through here. About like it. And it just, to me, it just looks like that, like a little waterfall came out and fell back here and is doing its thing and then came here and is coming back out. 
and falling again. Just like, just like so. And if you need to, you can, you can sparkle that white up at the top up here, just enough to make it look like the sun's really, really lighting it up. And then you can let it be seen just a little right there. And let it kind of play out like, like that. And then you can do the same here now. On that outside line right there, you can, you can definitely define it now by by pulling it like so. And then this inside line, you can define it now. And then you can just pull you some other colors right down in the, like in the middle or something, just to give it a, water effect about like so and of course of course this one's going to hit and it's going to it's going to flare up down in here you know somewhere but we'll work that out when we get to it because we're going to we're just bringing some more trees across here all right clean that little brush up now on our next set of trees, we're gonna go into the Van Dyke Brown, which is a lot darker color, okay? We're still gonna go up and touch this other color because even though Van Dyke Brown is a darker color, we don't wanna just come in there and just, you know, throw it in all at once. We still wanna gradually get to this color. We don't wanna, just jump right into it and scare everything away. <laughs> but just like we've been doing, just just come down at an angle. Oh, and one thing, one thing that I'm, I need to point out is even though we're coming down at an angle with these, the trees all standing up straight. See what I mean? We don't have none of the trees leaning over. They're all they're all doing what they're supposed to do. And get right in here and give yourself a and then we'll stop this one a little before and we'll go over here and get us some more color and we'll come in here I'll set about right here on this one and we'll start going up the hill again just keep everything Everything's straight and you still see the mist back there. As long as you got that that mist back in here as your separator, we got to take care of that. You know, that's that's a real important part of our painting right now. Is the fact that we got that that we got that mist working with us. Because if we lose that it's just, it's going to be gone. We won't have it anymore. You won't have nothing separating your colors. About like that's all we need. <coughs> now, the one thing I want to do right here, all right, first, first thing we're going to do is we're gonna take that brush, two inch brush that we've been using, and we're gonna pick us up a little more white, tap it on the brush, and come up here and just tap across in a couple places, just to give yourself some white across here. We don't want it all in the, all in one spot, like I said earlier. Then knock it off the brush, and then come up and just go to tapping at the bottom of these these trees, just like we've been doing. About like so. Just tap across the bottom here. For that last layer of mist. And 
come up and start blending it out. All right, now, right in here, we got to go to making some decisions because we didn't, we didn't drop down pretty far and I gotta fix that up here. It's not look right. It's too bright. That's way too bright. I can't have it that bright. Not that far off. Yeah, that's better. Okay. We are we're pretty far down now, so we need to we're just going to start making some decisions. And this is where we're going to see if my mind is any count or not. Uh, it's maybe where y'all go to cussing me. I don't know. If you're still with me at this point. All right. I'm going to come right in here. And I'm going to pick up some Van Dyke Brown. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do it with the knife. Or am I? Hmm. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna do it with the with the filbert brush. I think it'll look better if I do it with the filbert. All right. Wash it out right quick. Come over here and pick up some of this Van Dyke brown. On my filbert brush and I want to come right here under this bush but I want to stay in the mist I want to come right here first and I want to pull out something that just looks like a little rock and then move up staying in the mist and do another one right here under it and just bring this one around like so Like that. And then bring this one down kind of kind of smaller, about like that. It almost looks like a turtle crawling the hill. See that? <laughs> okay. Then I want to come on this side. And I want to come down. And I want to meet that part. Excuse me, right there. And I want to stay under the mist. Now this side don't have to be exactly like that side. This side can be different. You bring this side. The only thing you got to remember is don't bring one down much further than the other one. I mean, because you can take this one and make it kind of a lid shape if you want to. That's entirely up to you how you want it shaped. Then you can bring another one. You don't even have to touch over there. It can it can come down like this at an angle. You know, just however you want it. We're just gonna make us a few rocks in here. That's all we're gonna do. We just want them to look. Well, we can work on that when we get to the highlights. And then right here, we want to bring us down another one. Just like so. And it can be a little bigger. I'll bring it down kind of at an angle. About like so. Which means by the end we can, we can bring this one around in. Like that. What we're going to do is we're going to work our way up this hill here. But now they don't all have to be real big, you know, like that. You can, you can bring one here, like so. And then you can bring another one under it, like so. And you can, you can touch this. Because once we come back up here with highlights, we can, uh, we put 
we can put our highlights wherever we want them up here and make as many rocks as we want. We can turn this whole thing into several hundred rocks if that's what we decide to do. Our main thing right now is keeping that mist. And on these rocks right here, just just keep them in that in that round form. When you when you bring them out, just keep them in a like I'm saying in, in that rounded that rounded form. And see how we kind of crawl in the hill over here a little bit. You can kind of see. Hang on, let me get my hand out of the way where you can see it. See how this is. This is coming out like so. If this is maintaining going up. This is where we start working on the lay of the land at right in here. Just stay under that mist. You know, don't don't lose your mist. Because like I said earlier, that mist is real important. keep working these and they can get a little bigger as they get closer to you you know how things do in a, in a landscape how nature things always seem to get a little bigger when they get closer to you about like that that's about all we need if you got some light spots in here that's worrying you you can always come back and hit them with a little dark here and there but for the most part, like I said, this is this is not going to be as near as important right now <clears throat> as when we start doing our highlights, because that's when it'll start. Everything will start coming together over here. Just got to make sure you you maintain that that roundness. You got to keep them round or rounded looking. That's what we're doing. We're in control. We know what we're doing. We ain't lost control yet. I've said it time and time again. That is one of the things I love about oil painting. You can you can go to doing something and mess completely up. And it's not a real big deal. I mean you you can go back and fix stuff so easy. A friend of ours came over the other day and uh she said, uh, I saw that painting you did on Facebook. That was so pretty. And I said, well, thank you. She said, I would love to be able to paint like that. I said, well, you can. She said, oh, Lord, I can't. I can't draw. I can't even draw stick people. And, you know, so many people say that right off the bat when you go to talk to them about this. And you, you try to explain to people that that drawing is not really... A necessary tool to have to do this. You don't. You don't have to be able to draw in order to do this style of painting. And it's to get people to understand that it's it's hard to get them to understand because I guess you know everybody associates art with drawing, and I understand that to a point. You know I do. I really do. But this is seriously. This is not drawing. This is. This painting style is totally different than drawing. All right, I think next what we're going to do is we're going to take us a little of the Van Dyke Brown, a little of the Dark Sienna, and a little of the Titanium White. Mix these colors together. The 
then I'm going to take a little yellow, put in there, and a little red, so that the yellow and red kind of get in there and make an orange. And I want this orange to get into my browns. And this don't have to be mixed thoroughly. It can be a marble mix. I mean, it's, the browns are going to take over anyway. It's just they're going to have a different color brown to them. They'll have that orangish tone. But I just I want that color in there for uh, just to stay in harmony with what we got going on up here. All right. We're going to go up here and I'm going to knock a little of this thinner out of this uh, filter brush now. Maybe pick just a drop of it up. And then come into this highlight color. Now I don't want a lot of this color on the brush. I just want to kind of tap it on. Just kind of real lightly. Because you get a lot of this color on here, you can easily over highlight your uh, rocks. And we don't want to over highlight them. Okay, right in here. Just come right on top here. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Let me knock this color out first. I wasn't thinking about this. But these, these first few right here, they right under our, they right under our uh, light. So we can put a little brown in this white and start out with a, with a lot lighter highlight right here. Just like so. On both sides. Yeah, these, these can get a, a little more light on them. About like that. This is what I meant by when you're when you're highlighting, you can make as many as you want. Cause like say let's say you want to turn this one into two. Well, there's one. Then come right under it here and kick out. And there's two. I mean just that easy. You can you can make rocks appear where you want them to when you're in control of the of the uh, light and the shadow. Because all you're going to have is a dark side and a light side. And the shape is already there. You just kind of add to the shape. And the way you're adding to that shape is with a highlight. Because by using this this white like that if you keep it blended right you know to where you don't cover up all the dark the white's just gonna blend right into the brown and it'll create its own little its own little shadow back here and when it goes to creating shadows back here well that's just the body of your rock You can see how that kind of, how they just kind of form, how they kind of just stand out on their own when you bring that little bit of highlight across them. I hope y'all can see that in the camera. <clears throat> well, now they don't have to be, they don't have to be tremendously light. I mean, you, you, can make them, you can make them as dark or as light as you want. That's entirely up to you. In fact, the whole painting is up to you. How you ever, however you want to do it, is it's your world. Then on some of them, you can make them kind of jagged, you know. Give them a. They don't all have to be smooth rock. You can come across this one and make it flat on top, and just pull it down and stop it right there, and then come out of it with another one, and and have two rocks right there. One. One kind of flat and the other one kind of, I don't even know what color, what shape you call it. But it don't matter. 
That's the beauty of it. It don't matter. Just as long as you give it, as long as you give it a highlight, the rest of it just works out. You can have, you can have three or four stacked in on top of each other. You can come down here and pick up a little more red if you want to on some of them. Just give them a completely, a completely different look. You know, just like, wow, look at there. There's a, a darker color one on the bank over here. Just like so, you know. To me, that's what, that's what makes paint fun. Just being able to kind of do whatever you want to do and, and change things up. You come up here and tap on the highlights on some of them. And give them a real, real jagged look, you know. Like. Uh, like they're uh, eroding in some places. And you can make some of them just as smooth as you want, like water's been running over them for a hundred years, or you know, however you want them to look. It's your world. When I first started, I'd always wanna. Like right here, I'd, I'd make that just one big rock, you know, and, I, and it'd be the only big one up there, and it just looked so out of place. And then after I started watching other people and started painting, you know, different styles, I learned that, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a a bank like this that that you're going up and down at putting put rocks in here and you're trying to make them all different sizes. Well, don't don't throw it all away when you get out here to the end. You know, don't don't give yourself a big giant one out there and lose sight of what it is you're trying to do. Then you can come back along some of these up here and just give them a little bit of light with that white. It don't take much. You know, just here and there. Because anytime you go to highlight with this white. You know, as your final little touch of sunlight, uh, too much can kill. Too much can kill your effect because the sun's not going to hit everywhere. Like it may hit up here on that one, but it may hit down here on this one and right there on that one. You know, that's, that's just it. But where it hits, you control and by doing that, it gives you more realistic highlights. You know, you don't know if, if the sun got right behind the cloud right in here and, and this one turned out really, really dark. Or did the sun find a little hole and peek through and catch this one right here, you know? We don't, we don't know what the sun does. We don't control it. We just control where it goes. We control the light of it right here. And that's all you gotta do is just come up here and just, you know, peek you out some random, random little spots and touch here and there and it, it just pulls those rock shapes right out for you. Then we'll swap over to the other side and we'll start doing the same thing over here. We'll give ourselves some high spots just like so or you can turn the whole rock that color if you want to come back in here and get a little more to red a little more to yellow you know get that get that orange effect working kinda like it's got some rust on it you know not all rocks up here have to be the same color you want an orange one put your orange one in We'll go back to our original color that we had made up. We'll put a, a couple of highlights with some of them in here like so. About like this. 
So all you got to do is, is just tap the color on and just come back and just work it out. You know, just, just blend the color out. But just like that, you end up with, with little rocks laying around. We'll come in here and put a little more highlight on that one. We'll come up here and let the sun hit this one. Maybe you got that one right there a little bit. Just a little bit. Just like so. Maybe it caught this one. It's got that orange on it. Maybe it caught it right there pretty good. And here's one up here, kind of big. And we'll pull us in a couple more smooth ones. We need the smooth ones too. We don't want them all to be. We don't. We don't want all of them to be the same. You know, they don't all have to be jagged edged. Some of them can be. Some of them can be. Uh, smooth and some of them can be jagged some of them can have more sunlight on it than others and it's just basically what what you prefer you know that look like over here this one can be you know a couple of these can have more more of the sun look on them. Kind of like this one can right through here. You just don't want to, like I said, you just don't want to overdo it on a certain spot to kind of to kind of kill the, the, the whole thing. <coughs> because too much highlighting can can kill a pain. Just like too much darkness can kill a pain. I mean, you end up with a you end up with a uh, solid dark or solid highlighted painting that's just gonna all be flat looking. Ain't none of it gonna look right. All right let's get back up here now. Get some of these picked out. Like so. Alright, get over here to get some of this and bring it through here. Let's get a little more brown up here in places. About like so. Now we'll come in here with a couple more little ones. About like so. Make sure you keep that that dark, cause you gotta have that dark color to to sell the illusion. All right, then we'll come right here and give us a little bit of sunlight. Pop on that right there. Maybe a little bit through here. Don't take much. Just enough to pull your dark up out of there. That's all we're trying to do. Maybe go over here and get a little white. Come up here and just make that one kind of stand out. And then this one. I mean it can even it can even come around like that. And create two right there. Just that easy. If you want to put a little sunlight out here on this one to kind of separate it from that one. I mean, that's basically what your sunlight highlight does is it, it separates your, your light and dark, but it also separates the other objects. And then up here where some of them are too, 
too fluffy looking, you can come up and kind of just pull that, pull that edge around, pull that top part around, and make it just blend into the bottom. That'll take that fluff in this side of it, because not all of them are going to have that that little jagged spots on them. Some of them are going to be round, like we said. All right, now we're going to go back, drop that in the thinner. Now we're going to pick up our little round brush again, and we're going to go right back up in here into our white. <clears throat> I want to bring that white. I'm going to bring it to, let's see, I don't want much on here. I'm going to bring it through, let's bring it through here like so first. Now let's let this come on down. Then we'll bring it, we'll bring it right through here over this rock like so. Just like that and right over that rock we'll just let it flow right over that rock too just like that we'll pick up just a little bit of thinner to thin us down some white Come right back up here, come across, and shoo, and shoo, just like so. And drop it right in here. And with it having that, that brown on it, that's fine for now. Because here in a few minutes, we will... Uh, We'll make that look like right, right here where it kind of where it stopped it. We'll we'll make that a little more noticeable up here on this one. And we'll bring it out again. This time we'll bring it right through here. Let it fall right in front of this one. Just like so. Make it just pull out. Like it just fell right down in here. And where it fell, remember, it's gonna, it's gonna need a little, little splash here where it fell. And we'll work on that as soon as we get it, as soon as we get it blended up here. Cause it's still gotta have a splash up here where it fell. That's the beauty of little brushes. That is the beauty of little brushes. You can always take them little brushes and get in here in these, these spots and work them out. Fade these colors out if you had to. Just whatever you gotta do to make it work. That's all you gotta do. See how that just comes out there and turns into mist? And then you can always come back in a little bit and uh, <clears throat> you can just sit here and really, you can work on that until it, like you can come right up here now and pull you in some color streaks of white to make this one stand out a little more. And give it that that waterfall look across here. Because all you got to go by now is is basically your brain. <laughs> you know, your brain's playing the illusion on you. Like like that water is hitting something back there. What's it hitting? 
well, you got rocks here. So what's to say there's not rocks back there? I mean, you just come up here and kick you in some some more water. Make it look like it's landing on something back here. And then here this water comes out and, and it comes over. But in that mist back there where it's landing, you can't tell what's happening. And then way back off in the distance back there, well, we definitely don't know what's happening. But the more we play with this, the more we can come in here and work on it a little bit. All right. Now what we got to do is work on our lid of the land some more. So if we we're going to pull that Let's say we pick us up a fan brush here, and we come into this white. And let's say we were going to let's put some right on the corner first. We come right up here where this comes out, it makes a little splash right here. Just just using the corner here. Put a little splash up on the rocks. Where it splashes out of it. <clears throat> and then come right up under it here. And just start pulling some of it out. And come down. Come down straight. And maybe you want to kick it off this way. About like so. off the canvas just like so just let it just let it get wider down here at the bottom and just try to keep it straight as you can coming across here and just let it go right on back up to the onto the waterfall like so and I know what you're thinking thinking, Harold, I really think you've lost it this time. <laughs> but just like so, just bring it up, bring it around, just like that. And I think that'll work out just fine. I really do. Because we're going to go back up there and work on some of that one a little bit when that paint kind of sits a little. All right, now we're gonna to need to wash us a two inch brush. No, I tell you what, before we do that, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and highlight. We're gonna go ahead and highlight our top side. All right, and in order to do that, I'm going to come into just a little bit of the yellow ochre and just a little bit of the cad yellow and just a tad of the sap green and believe me I am not going to use much paint for this at all because we're going to start way back here and I just want to touch just really lightly touch I do not want much of this color to show up at all back here. Just, just enough to maybe see that it's a, a different shade of color. That's it. Don't want you to, don't want you to pick out no color at all back here. I just want you to know it's different. That's all we after. Just to make it look like a little stain almost. Even if you have to ask, what color is that? <laughs> you know and I know what colors it is now. But don't nobody else have to know. Because that's way, way off in the distance. 
way off in the distance. All right, now we can add just a little bit of red and just a little bit of yellow ochre. I'm gonna pick up just a hair of thinner. I mean, just a just a slight drop. I'm gonna pick that yellow ochre, and that bright red up, and just tap some in on the brush. And then on a couple of these back here, just real lightly touch. Just real lightly touch. I mean, just very lightly. And then maybe on this side, lightly touch. A couple of them. And then come into your CAD yellow. a little bit of red on the brush and just touch real lightly because these colors are still pretty far off I mean even if you if you can start telling you know just just a little little bit of the color now that's fine but even at that they're still they're still pretty far off. About like so. That's all you need. Because if you get too, you get too vivid and, and too bright right now and all of this, all of this work that we did to, to keep it subdued is gone. I mean, you just, you're basically throwing that right out the window by, by killing all the color right now, if you do that. And believe me, you will know that you did it. As soon as it happens, you'll be like, oh man, that's too bright. That don't look right. And the, and the thing of it is, you can't even say, Harold didn't tell us that. Because I did. I just told you. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't suppose y'all blame it on me. I've got to say, I'm really getting some good comments from you guys. And I love them. I love reading every one of them. I really do. Y'all don't know what it does for me. I mean, to... To hear how much y'all enjoying this. It means the world to me. That I can sit here and paint and entertain. Instead of sitting up there watching TV doing nothing. Alright. We got us kind of like a little a little thing growing over our, uh, our water right there. That turned out pretty neat. I like that. I just see... One little thing right here where it needs to be. Yep, right there. Now it actually covered the water up. That's good. I like that. That worked out pretty good. And them colors are not too, uh, uh, they're not too bright. We can come back here on these, in fact, and get away with touching a little bit up into the mist to add to that effect and still not still not hurt nothing because this color is not wow that turned out great all right we're going to pick up our script liner now <clears throat> and i'm going to go into the van dyke brown color that we made earlier that had all the that had the yellow and the white in it get some of it on the brush this this will be a good light color I want to just come in here and just create a distant little limb here and there trunk here and there nothing real they don't all have to be straight 
you want to put some in crooked or whatever, that's fine. We just want something to indicate that there is trees way back here. We just don't want them to be real vivid. Then we can come into the Van Dyke Brown and the uh, Dark Sienna Mixed. Just kind of, it, it'll turn almost a grayish brown. And we can come right in here on these and just show a trunk every now and then on through here. And it don't have to be, they don't have to be real vivid either. Just, you know, just a little darker growing up through there like so. Because we can always come back with our, uh, well, I'll just show you here in a second once we get some of these drawn in. You can look at them and tell which ones need to be done. Like right here. And all I did was wipe the paint off the script line. And if you get one that just stands out too much, you can just come back and pull that dry brush over him. And it'll push them down into the painting. And no longer than it takes, you could just about go back and do all of them. That way it, you, you're pretty sure that you don't have any that's it's just blaring at you. Not like so. Well, this one kind of stands out. Let's knock him down some. Not like that's all you need. <clears throat> now we'll wash the script on a brush. Alright. I've been sitting here debating as to what color I think we need to do this with, and I think it's going to be probably, all right, let me knock this color out of my brush. I think what I'm going to do is pick up a little of the Van Dyke Brown and start with it to see how this works out. And if it, if it goes to killing my painting, I'm going to change up. But I'll start with it, just pulling it right through the Van Dyke Brown. All right, I'm going to come right up here at my rocks. See, I've got a little splash right there, so I'll stay out from under it. I'm going to come right up here and just tap right out from my rocks here. Over to my water. Back out. Just like so. Go all the way up to the rocks. Come all the way over to the water. So, now when you're doing this, this right here, just make sure that you don't drag this brush while you're tapping it. Because if you do, you're going to put big streaks in here, and that's not what you're looking for. You are not looking for big streaks. I don't think you are. I'm not. You may be. I mean, you painting your painting, and if you want big streaks in yours, well, who am I to say you can't have them? All I can say is I don't think you'll be real happy with them if you end up with them.
But if you do get some, and you're not happy with them, you can go back and fix it. It is oil paint. And it is very forgiving. I'm using this uh, Van Dyke Brown here to give us a dark base. And I'm not covering up all the yellow. There's, there's yellow coming through in some places. And when we come back to do our, our green for our grass, if some of that yellow, I'll tell you what, I'm just to speed this process up. If some of that yellow is still showing, that's fine. I mean, it, what it'll do is, I'm gonna pick up this two inch brush and put the work to this instead of sitting there beating it to death with that one inch. Take this two inch brush and get this done. <laughs> Like so. I started out with that one inch brush because I didn't want to mess up up there around them rocks. Up here and uh, got to run it off at the mouth. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I'm sitting there trying to fill this whole thing in with a one inch brush. Leave it to me though. Leave it to me. Alright, now I'll pick up my two inch brush again. I'm gonna keep it this time. And we'll come right in here. At an angle with the corner and start start tapping again on this side. Maybe I should have kept that one inch brush. About like so. That's all we're looking for right now. And that's about what we're looking for right there. And that's about what we're looking for. We got our little creek closed in. Alright. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to stop the video for a second or two. I'm going to clean some brushes. And I'm going to run upstairs and grab me something to drink. And I will be right back.